Good morning, everyone. So in the second part of this presentation, uh, I will also bring some updates in the uh, Lexar system. I will mainly focus on the current status of the system, the Lexar uh, quality check module, the Lexar file structure, and the ways that we serve the data to the public. So uh, here I would like to explain the current status of the system. So after Milan's presentation, you are now familiar with the frames, the entire programs and the Sentinel-1 acquisitions. So as of April, 2021, we have a total number of um, 1,777 frames, which cover most of the global tectonic and volcanic zones. Um, we have processed more than uh, 144,000 Sentinel-1 acquisitions, as we call them EPOC. And uh, based on that, we generated about uh, 455,000 inter programs globally. So among the total number of frames, we have got uh, 470 volcanic frames, which cover more than 1,024 global volcanoes. And here is the updating policy that we follow in Lixar system. We have a, a list of about 700 frames which are being updated on a monthly basis. And uh, these are mainly the tectonic frames. And we have got a list of 100 frames which are being updated on a weekly basis. And these are mainly re related to the volcanic frames. And finally, we have a list of active volcanoes. Uh, which are received from the Global Volcanism Program database, uh, more or less three times a week. So the number of frames in this list is variable and depends on the volcanic activities. These frames are updated uh, as early as the availability of the Sentinel-1 uh, acquisition. Uh, this figure shows the number of generated entire programs from uh, 2016 to present. Uh, X axis is the data, is the date, sorry, is the date that uh, we started from 2016, and the Y axis is the, the number of total entire programs. So uh, we had a processing push in uh, mid 2019, and uh, as you see, we, had, uh, we have had a significant increase in the number of generated entire programs, and now uh, this number has reached to 455,000 entire programs in April. Uh, starting from September uh, 2020, we had a slight decrease in our performance due to some server migration in Jasmine. So in uh, February 2021, uh, we improved the performance of the system by buying more processing capacity from Jasmine. And we almost doubled the number of cores and this enables us to better achieve our objectives. Uh, at the moment, we are able to process about 10,000 Sentinel-1 acquisition per month. And assuming that each Sentinel-1 acquisition has roughly a size of four to five gigabytes, we process about 40 to 50 terabytes of data each month. So what is our ob objective? So our goal is to process all the frames that lie in the tectonic zones, particularly the Alpine Himalayan belt plus the volcanic frames. Uh, as you can see in this uh, uh, figure, more than 75% of the earthquakes in the past century have occurred in, in this belt, and lots of damages and casualties have been reported. So uh, the size of these circles show the number of people died. That's why we are considered this as one of our priority regions. Processing all those frames will allow us to uh, have a better understanding of tectonic and volcanic activities within this region. Here you can see the Lixar system file structure, uh, which shows all the products we are generating in Lixar, starting from the top level here. The Lixar products are categorized into 175 folders, which corresponds to Sentinel-1 175 orbits. In the next level, we have the frames definition. The frames are defined here. And for each frame, uh, uh, the main Lixar products are stored in the inter programs folder. 
And as you can see, we are generating a coherence image, the filtered wrapped and unwrapped phases, as well as the unfiltered uh, phase. So uh, the main portal that we currently use to serve the data to the public is through the Comet Leaks install portal. And this is the uh, links at the bottom of this page, as you can see. And all the users can freely access our products and download whatever they need in their study without any limitation. So we plan to have the CEDA archive as the main serving platform. And thanks to the colleagues in CEDA, we have now most of our products ingested in this archive. You can see in this figure how our products are stored and can be accessed in CEDA. And uh, uh, more than 95% of the data, I would say, have now been ingested in the archive. Uh, the main challenge is the updating procedure. Uh, we expect that all the changes that we make to the entire programs or uh, when we generate new entire programs be immediately reflected in the archive. And CEDA is still looking for a solution for this. Uh, this is very important for the earthquake response, actually, so as its products will be immediately needed in the community. Uh, like any other automatic system that provides services to the end users, um, we developed a quality check module to make sure that the entire programs are correctly generated. Um, the quality of the in-store products can be affected by a, uh, by a number of factors, such as the missing births in the data, or uh, probably the, 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 the temporal recorrelation, which is happening mainly in vegetate, highly vegetated areas, or maybe some processing issues. So there would be some products that do not meet the necessary qualification and should be uh, somehow removed from the system. You can see some examples of these bad inter programs uh, in these figures. Different types of uh, errors can be observed. So we developed a two-step quality check module to identify uh, these entire programs uh, automatically. Uh, the first step is mainly based on using some morphological image processing techniques uh, to identify those artifacts in the entire programs. And uh, for this, uh, we, we use both wrapped and unwrapped images as the input. And uh, after an image enhancement step, the algorithm checks for the lines uh, using a canny edge detector followed by a half line detection. And uh, basically, if the lines are detected, the entire program is flagged as bad inter program and will go for the for the reprocessing. And we tested this algorithm over over many different inter programs, and we try to improve this uh, during time as we have more number of training samples. And uh, so we tested over many different programs and uh, we, had, we had a good performance. So in the second step of the quality check, the normalized mean coherence and the normalized unwrapped fraction was employed to form a 2D feature space here in which the bad inter program cluster could be easily uh, identified by defining a threshold value in this space. And uh, in order to find the appropriate threshold values, again, we tested this over many different uh, frames, over many different inter programs to make sure that the, the selected thresholds are, are fine. Yeah, so and we try to run this module before storing the products to the portal and uh, to, uh, to make sure that all the products are uh, correctly generated. So we have also a time series module. Milan provided some information about this. In summary, the processing flow involves a data preparation step and a time series analysis step. And the advantage of this open source module is that it can directly read the data from the Lixar portal. And uh, the output of this module is a velocity map and time series deformation for, for the place of interest. And uh, this will show the amount of ground deformation uh, with a millimetric accuracy. Uh, here you can see the estimated velocities using the, uh, this module for all the Lixar frames. And uh, here uh, I just use uh, those uh, who uh, had a proper number of interprograms in, the, in, in those frames. 
And in this figure, I just zoom in the Alpine Himalayan belt region. The color shows how much the ground is moving in the satellite line of direction. So this was in ascending because you know the satellite acquires data in two opposite directions, and we can estimate these velocities in the in the in the satellite descending tracks too, as you can see in this plot. Uh, so availability of this kind of uh, high accuracy deformation maps will eventually uh, allow us to derive the the the, the 3D large scale velocity field uh, in a global scale and uh, this can be used to generate the high accurate hazard maps and which will be very important for the decision makers. So we already did this for some case studies in Anatolia in some parts of Tibet, but we aim at doing this for the whole Anatolian belt. So this objective for, uh, uh, for this objective actually Jasmine processing facility will play a very important role. Okay, that was it uh, from my side.